Okay, welcome back to part two of this build. This part of it, I'm just going to put everything in here, in here. Probably get some of the driftwood in there. Put the airstone, probably put a couple more, probably that one on here. And just finish getting this build up and everything, making sure it doesn't leak in my fish room. And hopefully it doesn't, hopefully God will bless me with this, because honestly, if this leaks, well, there'll be some damages, and I don't have the money to pay for them. So, uh, I did get a reply yesterday, Tuesday, December 8th, the day I filmed the last video. Um, one thing I did get a reply on is that what part of the form to post my question on. I have not got an answer to that thread that I created. So, I'm hoping this doesn't come back to bite me in the bum. But one thing I did want to mention that I forgot to last part of the video is I'm hoping what I'm thinking about doing is trying to figure out if I can put a trio or maybe two or three trios of panther crabs in a 40 gallon. And what I'm going to do, let me get a shot of my face. What I'm going to do for that is in essence get the 40 breeder set up, get it all done be able to breed these nine panther caps which I'm going to get hopefully in February or March and what I'm hoping to do after I breed them and I raise them in the 40 breed or the crablets in the 40 breed or I'm going to either one or two things I'm going to one um go ahead and raise them in the raise the crablets use the crablets as the next generation which I will do anyhow just to make sure I have a continuous supply of these crabs for all of y'all and I'm going to keep them in the 40 Beetle, keep a few in the 40 Beetle, because I, I'll have to separate them from male, female, generation, crab, everything I'm planning on doing with these. But hopefully I'll be able to keep, keep a trio or two in the 40 Beetle, see how that goes. And hopefully I'll be able to not have any issues with the crabs together. If I do not decide to do that if they take too long, if they take too too long or whatever. Since I'm hoping, let me show you. In this tank I mentioned last part of the video, I'm hoping to get some shrimps for that tank, which I have not evolved. De I have not told what I'm going to get, but I do plan on doing that in the next month. But I'll be getting some shrimps for that tank, which will, I'll sell to my local fish store. And at that point in time... I'll hopefully have enough money, you know, after breeding them and whatnot, to get a new, it has to be new because any invertebrate is sensitive to copper, which is a bad thing to have in any aquarium, and with a used aquarium, you cannot be positive that there has not been any copper in the aquarium. So I'd rather just buy it new. You can buy it used if you want, if you need a, if you need a really cheap alternative. But one thing that I would warn you is put some cheap, like, ghost shrimp or something. Make sure they don't die. And then that should give you a good idea of the copper. Or just an even better solution so you don't have to buy anything. Buy a copper test kit. Let me get... Sorry about that. That happened the last... Yesterday, too. But this is a copper test kit that I got from eleven ninety nine at my local fish store. And if you keep an aquarium filled up and after a couple of days of it being filled up you go ahead and test it with the copper test kit sorry about my thumb on the camera but if you test it with the copper test kit that'll tell you if there's any copper in the aquarium or whatever that's seeking in the water if there's not you can go ahead and put whatever in vertebrates no matter how it's, hopefully you don't do anything too expensive like I am I'm kind of the um, exception to the rule, as they say. <laughs> Alright, so the sun's going down, which is why I have the light on inside. The 40 gallon has been bubbling. I put the PVC pipes, just put it through so that the air stones would be on the bottom. Put the heater in there this morning. It's about 20 degrees Celsius. That's about 25 degrees. So still a little bit of, um, temperature differential. But it's been bubbling for about 24 to 36 hours. 
Last time I checked, it was still smelling a little bit like chlorine, so I'm not positive on if I should move them tonight. But that's really what I'm here for. I'm just going to try to move some of those in here, maybe just the plants. I don't know yet. But that's what I'm going to do now, so this is just another segment in the video. Alright, so there's negligible smell of chlorine in the tank, so I think it's good to put everything from there in here. I'm going to do that now before the light turns off so that they can be at rest for the rest of the night. And the light officially turns off in about 45 minutes, so I should be alright for trying to move everything over. So let's get started on actually doing this. Unfortunately, I won't be able to film the whole process. I just, I'm not set up for it. But I will film parts of it and speak on some certain areas and stuff, so stay tuned. Alright, so the first step in this build is to put all three heaters. You see how I have them on the floor. All three heaters on the ground, on the bottom of the tank, turned on so that they heat this water while that water cools off a little bit. Once they're about equal temperatures on both, I'll move the guppies from there in here. It shouldn't be too terribly long, maybe five, ten minutes at most. And again, I apologize for not being able to film this like some YouTubers who actually film the whole process and they just fast forward through it. I'm not able to do that at this point, hopefully in the future if these videos become popular enough and I own enough money and stuff I'll be able to do that, but one, don't have enough viewers, two, don't have the money, so, um, kind of fresh out of luck, but step one is just put the heaters in here, of course I unplugged that, and eventually I will be hiding these cords a lot better. Right now I'm just not really concerned with it. I'm not going to have a 3D background or anything. But I will kind of zip tie them together. I use zip ties to hold everything together. Well, twist ties I guess. But I can also use zip ties to hold everything together. All of the extra cords and everything. And that makes keeping them in storage a whole lot easier. So I'll continue with this. And I'll let you know what I do next and I'll definitely show you how I'm getting the guppies from there in here but that'll be in a little bit. Alright so there's a couple reasons why I have them in the bottom versus on the sides or something because for one heat rises so this will actually help heat the whole aquarium since I don't really want very many cold spots or anything at this point point. and another thing that, I, that really annoys me about having three heaters you will probably see in some of my videos if I ever do this enough that this one always stays on those two click off eventually I'd like to get these in sync to where all three turn on all three turn off at the exact same time it's really frustrating that that one's using up all of my electricity these two are just switching on and off like they're supposed to so I have no idea but as you can also tell I put all of the cords back there but I did discuss organizing that but um, currently this one's about 22, 23, that one's 25 degrees Celsius so it's getting to the point that I'll start moving those over it's only been like one two minutes so stay tuned alright so plant and filter movement commences gonna move these over to the 40 literally drag and plop and this is probably some of the problem as far as the snails I did I do have some snails in here that I'm trying to get rid of which is a great thing about doing this now and doing it how I'm doing it is you can literally pretty easily, not exactly concretely, pretty easily get rid of any pest snails you may have while you're doing this, so one thing that I'm trying to do now is just look, oh yeah, there's plenty of snails on this, okay, I'm going to have to turn the video off for now, just so I can try to get as many of these snails as possible off of here, try to clean that a little bit, so stay tuned. 
Okay, so this is just a offshoot of the 40 Breedle project. And there, I know you can't really tell, is Hornwort. Let me pull it out for you. And this does have a few snails. This is aquarium salt, right there. And this will be going in this one. It, the source I read said to do one cup per gallon of water. This is a half cup measuring cup. And this is a half gallon of water. So it's a it's the correct amount. Half cup per half gallon or one cup per gallon. Dip it in there for 15 to 20 seconds after it's dissolved. And then you dip it in the fresh water, go put it back in the aquarium, which I'll do separately. But I just wanted to take you guys through this process so that if you all have any um, pest snails or anything that you either have in your tank or have um, that you buy from that you get in one of your plants that you buy from a seller you can always do one of these dips um, I did look into the H2O2 dip but I read that it would not kill the snails and I want it to kill the snails not just you know it would kill the parasites and such but I'm not concerned with that I'm concerned with the snails so that's why I'm doing a salt water dip versus a H2O2 dip and it's almost totally dissolved a little more than I'm filling in the bottom of the container and the great thing about um, filming on my tablet on my Netsys 9 is that it has a little timer that now says 2 minutes 10 seconds almost so the 15 to 20 seconds I should be able to get spot on now I'm not sure how the whole world is going to react to this so I'm kind of a little apprehensive of it but at the same time I bought this whole world for five dollars at my local fish store so it wasn't too terribly expensive and it's not like I can't just go back and get another big bunch of it so I'm not too terribly concerned. Now it did say to dip it back in the fresh water before you put it back in your tank which is what that one's for. Alright that's pretty much all dissolved. Now let's go ahead and dip the plants in. Let's just take a small little stem. Oh yeah, small little stem. Yeah, right. Um, dip it in for 15 to 20 seconds. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, tablet shut off. I have no clue why it's doing that now. It didn't used to when I first started making these videos, but now it's doing it all too often and it's really starting to annoy me. But yeah, I'm just put it in the salt water for 15 20 seconds. Now just trying to rinse it in the fresh water before I go ahead and put it back in my tank. And I'll actually put this right over here beside this one so that it's not necessarily ready to go in since I still have some hornwort in the um, yeah I still have some hornwort in here quite a bit actually so I'd like to get it all dipped and then put it all back in at the same time you can see I put I put the light back on just I unplugged it from the timer and put it on so that I can see what I'm doing the Java mouse is floating on a um, plastic mesh, and I was doing that over here. If you read the beginning parts of my panther crab breeding project in the description, you can find the link. Um, it's doing that because it makes it like right by the light, which makes like for really nice growth. And I do still need to form a moss wall from that, so. Um, I'm just trying to do that again just to see how it would do before I get the shelves. I just need the money for the shelves. I know which ones I'm getting. If 
but I also have a flashlight, which, let me turn the camera around. I'm going to put it between my teeth just like so, so I can see how the guppies are doing and can catch them in the process, so this isn't a great light as I am quickly finding out. Um, yeah, not really any penetrance in the water, but we'll figure it out as we go because that's what I do. Um, <laughs> this is like literally a real life kind of vlog channel, I guess, that I just do as I think I should, and I live in alone, I guess. Um, so here's basically what I'm gonna do. Let me put. Well, let me explain. I'm gonna put the bucket in the water. This container in the water. Suck up some water. Suck up some guppies. And probably won't directly put them in here. I'll probably put them in a secondary container, which I need to get right now, so I don't forget. Um. Let me show you where I'm looking. I'm thinking one of these would do nicely. Ah, yes, one of these. It's not the exact same one, but it's a similar container as I did for my first unboxing video. So if you have not seen that, search on my channel. Click on my name below this video and look under videos and you'll see a first unboxing. That's where a similar one from that came in. It is right over there. Let me make sure I'm pointing out the right place, right there. Can't really see it, but you can see the sticky on the bottom. That's exactly the same, well, very similar thing as this. What I'm going to do is dump the water in here. Make sure there's no plants or anything that I do not want in there. And then I'll go ahead and put the guppies in there via net, which I have right there. Focus in on it, right there. I don't think anyone wants to think, oh, will he be negative today? Will he be positive? No, I want to be positive, upbeat as much as I can so that y'all can enjoy this very long build video. <laughs> okay, so let's get this started. Oh, man. Alright, let's forego the flashlight because I just do not like things between my teeth very much so let's forego that process um let's put the light down as well since I'm not going to use it don't want it all up in the snails which is that thing right there another one of those mesh deceptive was in this took up too much of the floor plan of the um tank so decided to forego that and try to just do it another way. I mean that's really all I'm doing. It's literally just doing things how I think it should be done and learning as I go. And of course if I do like any tips or anything I'll actually probably most likely I'll edit the video like the last segment. He okay so video cut out. Um, but yeah if I do any tips I'll probably end up like the last segment you saw. Well, two segments ago, since you know the last one cut out. <laughs> but the two segments ago, you guys saw me do the salt water dip for my plants. If you guys ever, like, if I feel the need to go ahead and make a tip or something outlining the process of that. What I will probably do to make it a heck of a lot easier on myself is just edit that little bit of the video and put it in the and publish it as a whole new video on the YouTube channel. I know that's kind of cheating, but you know, I'm in college, college budget, budget. You all may know what I'm talking about. It's not as that that you don't have a whole heck of a lot of time. I just happen to be off for two months right now, so it's always nice. However much you can get off, there's one little baby guppy. Swim, baby guppy, swim, small furry dude. Can you see him? So cute. Try to get all of the plants that may have been introduced in this aquarium by then. Um, got them pretty handy at a net. Don't like using a net. Prefer to use a jaw. But at the same time, I know the... 
I know sometimes it is necessary to use a net, like with guppies. Oh my. Okay. Did I get? Did I tell you about how I took all of them from my 75 into that tank? Oh, don't even want to go through that memory again. Got two small fry here. Yay! But let's just say it was not fun at all. <laughs> um, pretty much, I found out guppies are a lot faster than I ever thought they were. And it's a whole lot more difficult to catch them. So, yeah. That's why I'm happy I'm doing a smaller tank to a bigger tank this time. Not a bigger tank to a smaller tank because that was a headache and a half. Yeah. Um... So, yeah. And I was in the middle of the semester, too, so I was super stressed already. Not the best times in the world. Um, don't think there's any more small fry in here. Don't think there's any. Oh, there's one. There's one. There's one. Hello. Come to Papa. That kind of sounded kind of creepy. Um, <laughs> as I said, real life, I'm a very decent guy. I don't usually cuss unless I'm severely irritated, which I normally don't get. Though I will tell you, this is my favorite hobby, bar none. At the same time, it's one that literally, I hate doing this a little bit right here. Like, honestly, I will share a secret that probably no one knows. I don't do water changes. I just don't. <laughs> Need to get in the habit of doing them, but I normally just don't do water changes. The reason? They are annoying. At one point, way back when, before I started this channel, since we might as well just ramble on and on, um, oh, there's little, another small fry right over here. But at one point, I was trying to figure out how to fill up a tank with like an auto top, not, not an auto top off, but a, kind of an auto top off from a bigger tank. I was using the 75 gallon gonna be streaming it to that one and then all of these that was my previous ideas for this panther crab breeding project never did get that done for a very good reason um <laughs> but point is I at one point had a bed in here and had 175 gallon right there 175 gallon against that wall and trying to Actually, I think at that point I was taking them down. I didn't even have this project set up, so... Don't know where I got that idea from. Um, yeah, I was taking the whole thing down. Tried to... Swim, little guppy, in the new hole. Yay! Uh -huh. Tried to go ahead and... Take it down. Had a whole, you know, had one of these things. Draining one of the tanks into the, another tank which I had in another cell on this side of the room. I was draining it from that side to this side, and wouldn't you know it, it was really taking a lot out of me, which these things really do a lot of times. As I've said, I'm not the most fit 21-year-old, but I'm pretty fit, I guess. I like to think so. And I'll probably keep saying that because I like to think so, not necessarily because it's true. <laughs> But, this is getting on five minutes, so you guys kind of get the idea, and I'm kind of tired of rambling. Um, so, I'll do, a next, I'll do the next segment once I get all of these guppies in a day. Because, honestly, this is probably going to my little back starting to hold already. And, this is probably going to start getting a little more annoying. Hey, me again. Um, so, I went ahead and I'm starting a different methodology. I put two of these in here, two container fulls of that water, as you can see it's a little yellow, it's just called tannin, it's nothing bad, that in natural systems is bad, this in natural systems is not. Um, just a little bit more on tannin, it's basically, it leaches from driftwood, which is why that is literally black, it's called a black water stream in nature. A lot of fish that are wild caught, you know, especially like in the Amazon and some other places, they actually don't have a whole lot of flow, but they have a lot of roots and branches and other types of driftwood, which we, I mean, driftwood is all just branches and roots. It's basically what driftwood is. 
that's been soaking in the water and actually breaks down a little bit at a time. It's not major, especially due water changes, which is one reason why I need to get in the habit of doing them. But um, basically, in a very slow moving system, that black color would look all natural. Fish would be living in it just fine, all dandy, fine and dandy. It's nothing to be worried about. In aquariums, we have nice, clean, pristine water, which a lot of fish, especially if they're wild caught and they're not used to aquariums, they're not going to do well in that. So you have tannin water, which is kind of yellowish, kind of yellow brownish, I guess. But basically, back on the topic of discussion, I'm changing my methodology because guppies, as I've mentioned in the 75, are extremely quick little buggers for fish, I guess, technically. <laughs> But basically, since they're so fast, and by the way, I have not even caught any of the big mamas in there, which I originally got, but um, they are really fast fish, and I think I just caught one. Wonderful. Did not want to catch you, so please get out of the net. Come on, get out of the net. Come on. Basically, what I'm doing is getting all of the stuff I don't in my 40 gallon. I'm trying to get all of that. Really? Okay. And of course, they're little fish, so they have little brains. <laughs> but the thing is, with these fish, and any fish that aren't really bred for, like fancy guppies, they aren't that quick, typically, as compared to the wild caught ones. But if you ever see these guys sprint, let me try to encourage one to sprint after I clean out this net. Yeah, see, basically, these guys are quick. See, they seem all slow, but then when you try to get them in the net, okay. Anyways, these guys are not cooperating. They're probably very tired. I am too. It's, what? I don't even know. I don't even care. I don't want to know, okay? Um, yeah, this is just another quick little segment. I'm basically changing my methodology a bit. And basically... I'm trying to figure out more efficient ways of doing this because obviously I still have about half the, eh, quarter to, third to half the tank still full of water and of course, guppies that I had to figure out. And my back's starting to hold. It's only been like, what, five batches maybe that I put in there? You may be able to see them, probably not. No, way too small. You'll see them in just a minute. Let's go ahead and, and yeah, you may have noticed, I went from down there to up here. Okay, if that ends up falling in the water, I'm going to be very upset. But if it ends up falling on the ground, it fell on the ground up in this height, so, but I'm not really concerned about that. So now, since, let's hopefully not dump this on the floor, which is not going to happen, by the way, I'm professional. So... There we go. Got that little piece. Just getting a few more little stragglers of stuff I do know in my aquarium. But you can see there is a bit, a few, several actually guppies in here. May not be able to tell, but I'll show you when I dump it. But basically, after I get to this point, normally, previously, I would hold a net. I'd hold the net at this corner while I'm dumping it out. Since I'm changing methodologies and getting all the stuff out that I don't want in here, first and foremost, I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, and then basically I just dump all, everything in here. Got these and all. And of course I just saw a bunch of stuff going there that I would rather not have in the aquarium, but I do I care about these a lot, which is why I'm trying to use, which is why I'm trying to conserve the wild populations of these species. Of course, guppies are not on my real top priority list. Whatever's going to be going in here, the panther crabs, the shrimp, which is more of a money maker, but it still reduces the demand for the wild caught shrimp and imported shrimp. It's quite expensive. One seller does actually get it at like $6 a shrimp, which is a pretty dang good price for this shrimp that I'm going to get. I'm hoping to sell it for 4 to $5 a shrimp. But of course I'm also hoping to sell it to my local fish store at first before I sell it online and everything. 